this was on the 13th day of the month of Adar. And on the 14th day of the month, they rested. That's the word Noach. The same one as in the fourth commandment. They rested and made it a day of what? Feasting and gladness. What is linked with Noach? Feasting and gladness. By the way, this is the reason why Orthodox Jews do not fast on Sabbath. Because the Sabbath is not a day for fasting, it is a day for feasting. And I'm not saying that you should be intemperate and gorge yourself. But even Ellen White says that we have to have a special food prepared for the Sabbath. Because it's a special day. Verse 18. But the Jews who were at Shushan assembled together on the 13th day as well as on the 14th day and on the 15th of the month they rested. There you have the word Nuach again. The same one as in the fourth commandment. They rested and made it a day of what? Of feasting and gladness. So what was God's Nuach like? It was a day of peace and quiet but it was also a day of what? Feasting and gladness. Notice Proverbs 29 and verse 17. Proverbs 29 and verse 17. Speaking about correcting our children. Correct your son and he will give you nuach. He will give you rest. What kind of rest? Oh, yes, he will give what? Delight to your soul. What kind of rest? Not, not just sitting down and doing nothing. No, he will give delight, joy, gladness, happiness to your soul. Notice Zephaniah chapter 3 and verse 17. One more example. Zephaniah 3 and verse 17. This is speaking about after God delivers his people at the end of time, after the time of trouble, God is going to rest and he's going to enjoy the presence of his people. Notice the ideas that are linked together. The Lord your God in your midst. The mighty one will save. He will rejoice over you with gladness. And then the translation doesn't catch it, but the translation says he will quiet you with his love. Really, the word quiet there is the word nuach. In other words, he will rest with you in love is what it's saying. He will rest with you in love. He will rejoice over you with what? With singing. What is Ruach? Can you now imagine what God did on the seventh day? It was a day of feasting. It was a day of gladness. It was a day of joy. It was a day to celebrate. It was a day to take a blessing. It is good. And in case you wonder whether God looked at what he had made, the Bible says that God looked at everything he made and it was very good. You see, God is a God of beauty. Now let's read what Ellen White has to say to see if the little old lady knew this. <laughs> Patriarchs and Prophets, page 47. God looked with satisfaction upon the work of his hand. All was perfect, worthy of its divine author. And he rested, not as one weary, but well pleased with the fruits of his wisdom and goodness and the manifestations of his glory. So what was God? He rested as one what? Well pleased, with satisfaction he rested. He enjoyed the work of his hands as it says elsewhere in the Old Testament but by the way do you know that God did not sing and rejoice by himself go with me to Job 38 Job 38 and verse 4 see the whole heavenly universe rejoiced have you ever read in the spirit of prophecy where Ellen White says that all of heaven rejoiced on that Sabbath day well is Ellen White inventing this no she's getting it from scripture Notice Job 38 and verse 4. Where were you when I laid the foundations of the earth? God asked Job. Tell me if you have understanding. Who determined its measurements? Surely you know. Or who stretched the line upon it? To what were its foundations fastened? Or who laid its cornerstone? Now notice this. Is this speaking about creation? Yes, yes it is. 
when the morning stars, which represents the angels, when the morning stars sang together and all the sons of God shouted for joy. Was this a heavenly celebration? God the Father and His Son and all the angels and the representatives of the worlds rejoicing because of creation? Yes. Are you understanding a little bit better now how it is that God rested on the seventh day Sabbath? But now we need to ask ourselves a very important question. When did God bless and sanctify the Sabbath? You know, for years and years until that trip to Panama, I had always assumed that God blessed and sanctified the Sabbath when the day was beginning. In other words, God finished his work the sixth day, and now he says, now the seventh day is about to begin. This day is now going to be holy and blessed. But as I studied this, I discovered that God did not bless and sanctify the Sabbath until the day ended. And this explains why God did not command Adam and Eve to keep that first Sabbath. You say, now how is this? Go with me to Genesis chapter 2 and verse 3. We'll go to scripture first. This is a very important point. You say, who cares whether he said it was holy when it started or he said it was holy when it ended. It's theologically very important because it explains the reason why God did not command Adam and Eve in Genesis chapter 1 and 2 to keep the Sabbath. Genesis 2 verse 3. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. Why did God bless and sanctify the Sabbath? Because in it he had what? He had rested. So he rests the whole day and then what does he do? He blesses and he sanctifies the seventh day Sabbath. Let's read also the fourth commandment. Exodus 20 and verse 11. Exodus 20 and verse 11. It says there, For in six days the Lord made the heaven and the earth, the sea, and all that is in them, and rested the seventh day. Therefore, did you catch this? He rested the seventh day, therefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. So let me ask you, when did the Sabbath become holy according to the book of Genesis and according to Exodus? The Sabbath became holy when the day ended. Now allow me to read you from the writings of Ellen White. You know, I've read dozens of books on the Sabbath. I've heard many, many sermons on CD. I've watched DVDs. Dozens and dozens of them. But Ellen White and the Bible are the only writers that I have read that caught this point. Notice in Patriarchs and Prophets, page 47, this is the statement that I read on the way to Panama. She says this, After resting upon the seventh day, God sanctified it, or set it apart as a day of rest for man. When did the Sabbath become a day of rest for man? After it ended. Are you with me or are you not with me? Yes, it's been a long day. But this is a very important point if you want to defend the Sabbath. Let me read you another statement. This is in Desire of Ages, page 281. She says, Because he had rested upon the Sabbath, because he had rested upon the Sabbath, God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, set it apart to a holy use. And now listen to this. He gave it to Adam as a day of rest. When did God give the Sabbath to Adam as a day of rest? When the day, what? When the day ended. So what I'm saying is that first Sabbath was not Adam and Eve's Sabbath at all. It was God's Sabbath. Because God worked six and God rested on the seventh. This first week is not man's week. This first week is God's week. Because God worked six and God rested on the seventh. And the day becomes holy.